Good morning, and welcome to worship here at First Congregational Church in Melrose, United Church of Christ. We are glad you joined us on this Pentecost Sunday and Graduation Sunday, and I invite you to join me in our call to worship. Life is a journey filled with beginnings, endings, and new beginnings. Through all of the twists and turns of life, God is with us, and Christ goes before us to prepare the way. No matter the transition in our lives, one thing remains constant, God's everlasting love for us. In all that love, we grab on to each new day with purpose so that our faith in God is made real in the world. As one chapter closes, and another opens. We celebrate what has been and look ahead to what will be. Whether we are together or separate, we are on the same journey of faith, guided by the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christ is so 
Please join me in prayer. O holy God, remind us that even as we seek your presence in our lives and in our world, you seek us as well. Above all, you desire relationship with us. So great is this desire that you sent your only Son to live with us, work with us, guide us, and bring us closer to you. We thank you then for your companionship and solidarity with us and ask you to hear us as we share together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I will trust you. on this graduation Sunday, I invite you into this time of prayer as I share with our graduates this morning a prayer of blessing. O Holy God, we ask you to send your blessing upon all those who are graduating from high school and college this spring. Remind them of your love and your nearness as they make new plans for the future. Through Jesus Christ and the power of your Holy Spirit, keep all graduates attentive to your calling in their lives so that their plans are shaped by their discipleship. Guide their steps, O God, as the paths before them grow more numerous. As we celebrate their accomplishments, may all graduates live their lives out of love, truth, wisdom, and justice, always in the spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Listen for the word of God found in the book of John. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. May we take this message into our hearts and bring it forth in our lives. Just to turn away Oh, let each one fend alone The need is too great The injustice too strong Oh, who are we to change the world? But in courage and love We find together we're strong We have wisdom 
the gospel ignite. Holy One, be our light. We are here for a time such as this. Well, greetings to the children this morning and everyone else uh, who's watching today. It is Pentecost Sunday. We're c combining uh, two themes today. One is uh, Graduation Sunday, as we recognize our graduates uh, uh, and during this worship service. And it's also Pentecost Sunday, uh, which is why I'm wearing red. Red is the uh, color of Pentecost, and we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Now, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today, because we talk about God, we talk about Jesus, and then there's this third part of uh, the way we understand God, the third part of the Trinity called the Holy Spirit. And it's going to be a little bit tough to get our, our minds around that, but I have found that a great way to get a handle on the Holy Spirit is with a fan. And it's getting hot these days, uh, so people are using fans, so maybe you can uh, think of this next time you have a fan going in your house or, uh, or where, wherever. Now, uh, the fan I have here, it's hard to tell if it's on or not, right? Because you can't, you can't see it. You can't see the, uh, the uh, air moving out of the fan. So how, here's some ways that you can tell if, uh, if the fan is on or not. One is 
that you can hear it, right? If I turn this on, all right, so you can hear the motor running, right? You can hear it. That's one way. Another way to tell, I'm going to shut this, and I'm going to attach these to the fan. Never do this on your own, by the way. Uh, always have a grown-up if you're, well, even anybody else probably shouldn't try this, but um, you attach that and that. We'll see if we can, if we can see the fan on. Get these guys moving. Let's see what that does. So, there you go. You can kind of see now the air coming out of the fan, right? Because these are blowing around. So we can hear it. We can hear the, the fan uh, moving the air. And with these, we can see it. Now, the other way is if I turn this right on myself, I'm going to feel it. I'm going to feel that air, and I do, coming at me. Okay, so there's three ways to tell if this fan is moving the air around. We can hear it, see it, and feel it. Now, the story of the first Pentecost about the Holy Spirit has a lot to do with that. Because the disciples, remember, had seen Jesus die on the cross, rise from the dead on Easter, and then ascend to heaven to live with God, and then they were left by themselves. And Jesus said, wait for the Holy Spirit. And they didn't know exactly what that meant. But they were waiting, and they were praying, and then they realized the Holy Spirit was with them because they heard it. It was like the sound of wind, the Bible says. The sound of wind in the room. And there were flames. It didn't burn anybody. It wasn't that kind of flames. But it was like the energy of God was around all of them. So they, they heard it. And they saw it, that energy in the room, and then they felt it. They felt it in their hearts. And they knew that the Holy Spirit was with them. And the Holy Spirit wasn't just with them that day. The Holy Spirit stayed. And it is with us in the church today. And it's with you each and every day. So I hope that on Pentecost and on every day, you can take some time to feel that Holy Spirit with you. To listen for it in your prayers to God to look for it in the people around you, in the events around you, the things that happen to you. Where's God in all of that? And to feel it in your heart, to know that God is with you with that, that closeness, that energy, so that you can go out, like those first disciples, and make good choices and spread the love of God around to build up God's love and God's goodness in the world that's so in need of that good, positive energy right now. So that's a little bit of, of what the, uh, the holiday of Pentecost is all about. It's the arrival of that Holy Spirit that helped form the church and is with us still today and is with you each and every day to be the best person that you can be. All right. Thanks for uh, uh, spending some time with me, and uh, we'll catch up again next week. Well, it is graduation Sunday here at our church, and it is our tradition at First Congregational Church in Melrose to recognize uh, those uh, students within our congregation who are graduating from high school, and we're doing that this morning. Uh, we have three uh, youth in our church who are graduating from high school this spring, and we congratulate, and we honor, and we recognize them, but we also uh, want to congratulate all of those who are graduating from high school this spring, or graduating from college this spring, or graduating from graduate school uh, this spring. Huge accomplishments on the part of all of those folks, and uh, we do wish them all the best. And uh, to allow you to get to know uh, those three uh, high school graduates from our congregation, um, let me give you a little bit of, uh, of an introduction of each of them uh, this morning. Uh, first, we have Will Durant, who's graduating from Melrose High School. And while he was there at uh, Melrose High, his favorite subjects were English and economics. And uh, next fall, uh, Will will be attending uh, Northeastern University. Uh, next, we have Alex Brinchero, who's also graduating from Melrose High School. Uh, while he was there, uh, Alex took part in football, track and field, art classes, and he liked hanging out with friends, of course. Uh, next fall, he'll be attending Drexel University in Philadelphia, and he'll be majoring in product design there. Uh, I should also mention I was happy to be uh, Alex's mentor for his senior capstone project here at uh, Melrose High School, where he focused on public speaking. 
Uh, next we have Shane Buckley Fennell, who's also graduating from Melrose High School. Uh, he enjoys mountain biking uh, and uh, uh, EMARC and uh, Boy Scouts. Uh, next fall he'll be attending San Diego State University uh, and thereafter joining the Navy. Uh, Shane played uh, on a, a unified basketball team uh, with uh, Communitas, which is formerly EMARC, and uh, went with the team to the Special Olympics twice. Uh, he really enjoyed helping the kids develop their skills and to feel like stars. Uh, Shane achieved the rank of Eagle Scout, and his Eagle Scout project was collecting used bikes, repairing them, and donating them to Bikes Not Bombs. Uh, Shane will be studying criminal justice at San Diego State University and plans to go to Naval Officer Candidate School and join the Navy after he graduates. Shane worked for the uh, Education Stations After S uh, School program at the Lincoln School Elementary School for three years and the kids just loved him and I can see why. Uh, so right now we're going to pause for a moment uh, with this and uh, let you get to know them a little bit more even better because we have some videos uh, to share with you about uh, Will, Alex, and Shane and we're going to share those now. best encapsulate who Alex is or the spirit of Alex, it'd probably be um, the story that he wrote in his college essay. Um, he wrote his college essay about what it's like to be a lifelong Philadelphia Eagles fan living in New England. And that was hard at many times um, to be so passionate about your Eagles when you live uh, up here. But he stuck with it and he talked a lot about that in his essay about um, when it might have been easier not to stick with that. Uh, it was important to him to stick to who he was and his passions. And um, he's always done that. So even in high school when he was, you know, tough guy on the football team, he also um, stuck to being the compassionate person he is outside, um, off the field. He was part of um, the Student Action Board, which is a division of Melrose Alliance Against Violence. Um, you know, his uh, junior, senior year, he took art instead of taking gym because he loves art. So he's always kind of been a passionate kid. No matter what he likes, he likes it a lot. And um, he's learned the, the value of being true to who you are. He's, uh, he's done a lot of things through the years to make us very proud. Um, most recently in high school, um, he was on the National Honor Society. Uh, he was involved in sports, including being captain of the track team that never quite happened this spring. Um, but he was on the football team, started at a receiver his senior year, and uh, got two Super Bowl rings along the way. Two rings. And, um, and uh, so he's, he's really been um, quite a great kid. We're really proud of him. Uh, I hope that he continues to um, be true to himself and uh, continue to work hard and throw yourself into things that you are passionate about. Yep, and work really hard in college, but also have a little bit of fun. Not too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> We've been asked to say something about Shane Buckley Fennell and his accomplishments as a member of Melrose High School graduating class of 2020. We're his parents and we realized we could talk about how wonderful he is and his accomplishments for hours. But you probably don't have that kind of time, so we'll try to give you the quick snapshot. This funny, smart, compassionate, community active, all around great guy has seemed to have two passions ever since he was young, biking and volunteering. Now biking, he's been riding a bike since he was three years old. And today, he's an avid mountain biker. Volunteering, Shane started volunteering young while he was still at Lincoln Elementary School and has continued through high school. 
While at Lincoln, Shane served the community dinner on many Tuesdays at the Milano Senior Center. And here at FCC, he's volunteered for many church activities, including he sorted toys and clothing for City Mission, delivered flowers, and of course, at 6'5", he spent a number of years hanging lights in the Narthex for Home for the Holidays. He was built for that job. During high school, Shane teamed up with Communitas, formerly EMARC, and played on a unified basketball team, getting rebounds and passing the ball to individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, supporting the efforts to bring their team to the Special Olympics. And for most of his time at MHS, Shane worked for the Education Station's after-school program at the Lincoln Elementary School, the elementary school that he attended. And this past year, Shane achieved the rank of Eagle Scout, and his Eagle Scout project brought together both of his passions. Shane collected over 80 used bikes, repaired and donated them to the nonprofit shop Bikes Not Bombs. And today, his service to his community continues during this pandemic. Shane has been delivering food to folks who are not able to get out for themselves. Just a great, thoughtful young man who, this fall, will be studying criminal justice at San Diego State University, go Aztecs. And he plans to go to Naval Officer Candidate School and join the Navy after he graduates. We could not be more proud of the man Shane has become. Congratulations, Shane, and congratulations to the entire graduating class of 2020, especially those of you here at FCC. As you head out in life, please be true to yourselves, enjoy life to its fullest, and always stay humble and kind. Congratulations, Will. I can't believe you're graduating from high school. I'm very excited for you, but also a little sad that this isn't quite what we all envisioned when we thought about your graduation. I know you're going to do great things next year at Northeastern. Yeah, we expect big things from you. You want to go there and you want to make lots of money, I have no doubt that you will succeed. Ever since you were a little boy, we always called you Strong Will. Uh, wishing you and all the other graduates a happy and successful graduation and... Here's to the class of 2020. And now I invite you to join me in our litany of recognition and support on this graduation Sunday. This morning we affirm Alex Branchero, Will Durant, Shane Buckley Fennell, and all graduates as they reach graduation. We acknowledge all of their accomplishments and all of the work that they have done to bring them to this milestone and to a new beginning. On the journey through life, God accompanies us every step of the way. As you begin a new journey this year, we know, know that we are deeply proud of all you have done. As life choices before you grow more numerous, remember that Christ leads the way. In whatever endeavors you undertake, know that we are with you always in spirit. As you go forth, into the expanse of God's creation, know that the door of this church is always open for you as your church home. And let us pray. Holy God, who walks with us through all of our endings and new beginnings, surround Alex, Will, Shane, and all graduates with your spirit. Bring them confidence and courage Speak in their minds and in their hearts, giving them dreams for the future that are large enough to echo your great hopes for all of creation. May their lives be lived out of love, truth, wisdom, and justice in the path of your Son, Jesus Christ. Bless our graduates and empower them in all of their adventures, learning, and decisions. Be close to all graduates in all that they do. Amen. And just another word of welcome uh, to all of you who are joining us here at First Congregational Church on this graduation Sunday and this Pentecost Sunday. 
A special word of thanks to all those in our church who are maintaining their pledges and offerings to the church during this time, and to all those who are new and making special contributions to our church uh, via our uh, website. We're so grateful for these uh, offerings because it is by means of those offerings that our church can remain strong and vibrant uh, during these turbulent times. In that spirit, please join me in prayer. O oh God, bless by the power of your Pentecost Holy Spirit those offerings that come into our church. Bless them and multiply them so that your light of compassion, justice, and love can go forth from this place to build your realm in this world. In the name of our resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I invite you to hear this account of the first Pentecost as it is recorded in the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? Here ends our scripture lessons for this morning. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of these holy words. And will you pray with me? Compassionate Creator, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds and our hearts bring us into deeper relationship with you, you who are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as I mentioned, we're holding two themes here uh, this morning. One is Graduation Sunday and the other is Pentecost Sunday. And my message today for the graduates is pretty straightforward. And it applies to all of us, really, and it's founded in this story, this account of the first Pentecost. Because there's some striking parallels here. Some striking parallels between the Pentecost story and what is happening in our lives and in our world today. Remember what came just before this amazing account in the book of Acts. Jesus had died on the cross, he had been resurrected on Easter morning, he appeared to his disciples and to others, he had ascended into heaven, and now, now he was gone, and the disciples were more than a little lost. Things were more than a little chaotic. They had 
only to go on what Jesus had told them. All they had to go on was Jesus saying to them, go to Jerusalem and wait. Wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, what does that mean? Go to Jerusalem, check. Wait, check. But how do you know when the Holy Spirit has arrived? What does that look like? Is it, is it, is it a knock on the door? It's, it's a good thing, right? Is it, is it, I don't know, someone else's awesome takeout being delivered to your place by mistake? I don't know. It's a good thing. But they probably completely believed and they trusted what Jesus said, but they were also likely walking away murmuring to each other, yeah, any idea what this is about, what this Holy Spirit is about? What's the Holy Spirit look like? How about you, Thaddeus? You're always quiet. And Thaddeus, you never hear from Thaddeus in the Bible, by the way. And he was probably quiet here, too, because nobody knew what to expect. None of them knew what to expect. And you know what? Neither do our graduates. There has never been a more difficult and uncertain year to be graduating from college or from high school. If you're off to college next fall, you can't be sure. You can't be sure if you'll be taking classes from the comfort of your own bedroom at home or if you'll be living on campus and uh, living there and taking classes there. Some, of, some students haven't even been able to visit the campuses uh, that they're interested in attending. So what does all that mean? What does that mean for signing up for classes? What does that mean for finances? What does that mean for connecting with friends? What does that mean for choosing majors? You know, there's a huge increase in the number of high school graduates who are taking a gap year coming up. They're choosing to do something else for a year until things calm down. And for those high school graduates who are on the fence about going to college at all, many are choosing not to. Wait and pray. That was Jesus' directive to the disciples as he ascended, and boy, we've been doing a lot of both of those, haven't we? waiting and praying. So, there they were, in Jerusalem, in another upper room, waiting and praying. And suddenly, suddenly something happened. Suddenly there was wind and flame and energy and new languages, and they knew. They knew beyond any doubt that the Holy Spirit had arrived. They were so filled with that spirit that all of their anxiety left them. So filled with that spirit that all of their fear and grief left them. They felt and they knew. They knew that they could do anything that God asked them to do. And they did. They left that upper room and formed the church that's been around for over 2,000 years and is here this very morning. It didn't matter that the Romans were still after them. It didn't matter that the religious authorities had slammed the door on them. It didn't matter that they really didn't know how to start this and, or how it was going to end. All they knew was that the divine was here. And it was in them and nothing could stand in their way. All they knew was that the world that was once so filled with, with crisis was now filled only with opportunity. Here's the thing. That Holy Spirit of Pentecost didn't just show up and go away. It stayed. And it didn't just stay in that upper room. It left there and it went everywhere. And it is with you right now. To all graduates this year, you are entering a world that gives every indication of being a place of crisis, right? We have this, this coronavirus pandemic, this climate change, racism, homophobia, poverty, nationalism, this, this, this strange notion, you probably felt it or heard about it, that's coming from our country's leadership and trickling down to so many that the more educated you are, the, the less you can be trusted. It looks like one big ball of crisis. But that's because, that's because you're still waiting in Jerusalem. That's because you're still waiting and praying and haven't felt that wind and flame and energy that's around you right now and each and every day. 
That's why Pentecost is so important. Because without it, who wants to go out into a world like this? But with it, with it, the picture changes. And the landscape shifts from crisis to opportunity. Because you know what? This pandemic has caused the world to hit the reset button. And, it is, and you're the ones, you're the ones who are going to shape the new world that's about to emerge. You're the ones who can say, why in the world would we go back to the old normal? Now is the time to, to shape and craft and sculpt a new normal where people are made well, where our planet is healed, where skin color is irrelevant, where gender is a choice, where classism fades, where refugees are welcomed, and where education and expertise are valued and respected. But that can only happen. That can only happen if you breathe in the winds of that Holy Spirit and feel the heat of that Holy Spirit and go out and speak and build and convert people to hope. Because of Pentecost, crisis becomes opportunity. May you feel, may you feel that spirit with you now and in the days of ahead as you enter this world with absolute confidence in God's companionship. May you feel that spirit so you can enter this world with an excess of the courage you need to bring about a better tomorrow. May it be so. And please join me in a spirit of prayer. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that came to those early disciples on that first Pentecost and remains with us today. May we feel the wind and flame of that Spirit as inspiration to view the landscape of our world today as one filled with opportunity more than crisis. Continue to bless all graduates and all those entering new chapters in their lives whether in terms of schooling or jobs or relationships or living situations. May the wind of your Holy Spirit blow through our church today and every day so that the light of your love and the ministry of Jesus Christ are carried far and wide through First Congregational Church. It is in his name and by the power of that Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen.
And now I invite you to go forth in the peace and the love of God. Go forth to feel the full power of the Holy Spirit of Pentecost that surrounds you each and every day. Go forth to see the world as a place filled not with chaos and crisis, but with opportunity. Go forth as God's people. Go forth in confidence. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Amen.